Hello everyone and welcome to this webinar, which is also the first one in a series of weekly based webinars related to IT service management. So starting from today, every Tuesday at this time, PCB will organize webinars for different topics that are related to ITSM. My name is Nick Kundose. I'm the PCB organizer of this webinar, which will be presented by our partner and uh, trainer, Mr. Yuri Sputze. He will talk about the benefits and main issues within implementation and running of an IT service management system. If you have any question or comment, please submit them throughout the presentation by using the question box in the right hand control panel, and we will answer to them accordingly. Please, Yuri, you may start the presentation. Yeah. Hi, everyone. So this is a bit tricky being a one-way communication as far as I understand because, I mean, you're, not, you're only able to type questions and then I'm going to be able to see them. Uh, please feel free to ask any questions over the time and then, we, and then we can try to discuss them in the end of the session. So my name is Joris. I work for a company which is called Analytica, which is, uh, which is actually in the Baltics. And we specialize in consulting our services in information security and business continuity and also IT service management. And in the same time, I have a couple of hats which are more on the other side of the pool, which means we are customers for, for uh, using actually IT service management ourselves in a bit other businesses ourselves. So I've been working uh, with IT service management since 2001, basically, as I was, as I was trying to recall before the seminar. And uh, the most of the experience I have had so far is uh, in different sectors. So we have had doing IT service management in finance sector, in government, in private sector, also a little bit of this in defense with the specifics we've had. And um, only some of the customers so far have been going for the, for the IT service management from the ISO 20001 perspective. And my idea today was try to share the reasoning behind these decisions and also try to understand if this reasoning will fit everyone or not in the uh, in making a decision whether or not to use ISO 20001. 20, okay? So, as I said, feel free to ask any questions. Uh, so I'll try to move through this through the presentation. I hope, I think this will be available to you afterwards anyway. It's online recording, so you can check any other things over there. I will try not to focus too much on the standard itself. I mean, everybody can look up the standard um, and you can buy it on the ISO web page or whatever the local standardization body who's selling this is. But uh, my main, main point would be to try to think of this from the perspective of what's in, what's in the standard and what's in the requirements for the people using it. So very short, only first slide about the standard itself. This is a bit different standard than other management system standard. Principles are the same. There are certain requirements. In this one, there, there is 170 requirements for, for the standard, which is quite a lot. And there are 15 processes described which should be in place for you to be compliant with the requirements of the standard. But as I said, I mean, this is not just process-based standard. It has also some other features which are, which even though they might not be in the text itself, which are more or less implied. And some of them are about actually having certain amount of technology in place. And some of them are about something a bit specific, which is basically service catalog and being, and the way you fill I said, I hope everybody is more or less familiar with the ISO 20001, and uh, otherwise, I mean, you would not be here anyway. If you want to look at this, I think the most descriptive thing you should look for the standard is the figure two in the standard, which is available also. I think if you just Google for the process map for ISO 20001, you will actually see it everywhere. So this lists the processes and their relationship between one another. and. Um, as every other standard, this one also makes a really great evening read because, I mean, as soon as you start reading the standard, you almost immediately fall asleep. So my idea is to try to keep this a bit different, as I said, and not just not to put in this perspective, okay? Yeah, um, so continue about this. Yeah, okay. So from my perspective, there are certain um, different roles in the CRT service management, if you look at this. this and I, I will try to put this um, from the way... Yeah, I see it, and of course, I mean, this is not the objective, it's subjective, and probably your opinions can differ, but I mean, that's, you can ask questions anyway if you want to about this. So one role are the service receivers, and I would put these organizations, which mostly are actually having IT um, as a service inside the organization, but the core business would 
these would be the companies which have the IT service provision as core of their structure. Sometimes these are sub-companies, uh, sub-organizations of some other bigger organizations. Sometimes these are really specific service providers themselves. So for them, the IT service management could be the main business driver. Okay. Um, yeah, sorry, I'm having some bad noise on the background, but I'm not sure if it comes from here or somewhere else. Okay, yeah, uh, IT service management itself is valuable to both. I would probably argue that in quite many cases, uh, the um, ISO 20001 20, is a bit more valuable and a bit more understood and then quite much, uh, quite more often implemented by the service provider types of organizations, right? Um, there are benefits to service receivers, but if you look at the requirements from the ISO 20000, then you will see that there will be mostly service providers on the list who have actually implemented the standard and certified it afterwards. Okay, so if you would look in there, most of the countries have some kind of list, and I think ITSMF also has a list on their on their website about standards itself, and you can you can look it up and see if. Um, who, which are the companies who have actually got, gotten certified in your area of doing business in the new, as I said, you'll mostly see service providers. In certain cases, it will also be service receivers. Okay. This leads to another issue about the standard. This leads also to an issue, how does the, um, I, how does the organization see the service? Okay. So the service receivers, they mostly see this as a cost of doing business. Okay, so accordingly, their decision of how do they perceive IT services is that this is actually a cost of doing business for them. The service providers, of course, see this as a main business driver, as a way to make more money. So they are more interested, if the first ones are more interested in doing much more cost efficiently and just having a minimum level, service providers have to meet the level because they have certain agreements in place. And also, this is a way for them to make a certain amount of money within the, for the organization itself. So the way they look at the IT service management will be a bit different. And this might lead to different understandings of implementation of ISO 20000, okay? So I promised the old quote from the old movie, which was the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, so I would say that this is two perspectives to look at this. I will, the next slides will cover the good, the bad, and the ugly. And so the good part would be about the perspective of typical implementation. So what is good and what's mostly happening within the typical implementation. And the other one we'll, we'll be covering a little bit is about the standard itself and the way it's built, because as I said, it has a little bit different structure, a little bit different wording, and a little bit different way it's being organized than other standards in place. So the good things. So if you have come to a decision that you want to implement ISO 20001, there are certain processes which usually, and I'm not saying in all the cases, will be already in good shape. Sometimes these might be incidents and service requests. I would say from my experience most often, but your input on how you see it probably is much more welcome. And you can comment on this afterwards in the question section. And sometimes these might be different things like change management, like release and deployment might be in good shape and other things. Usually, if you have come to a point where you see the need for ISO 20001, you will also have some kind of service desk, help desk, whatever you call it in place. Okay. So there will be something already where you, all the tickets are coming in, somebody's managing them, sometimes it's going to be, you know, the one-point service desk, um, well, sometimes it's going to be distributed or whatever else can be over there. Usually that means also some reporting and some measurements will be in place already as well. Okay, so as I said, uh, the amount of reporting measurements will differ. I have seen really different customers. And we will talk about this in the benefits section, that sometimes the benefit the customer gets is not coming from the IT SMS, IT service management system. Sometimes it's actually coming from something totally different, which is looking from a bit different perspective on the management, which for most of you will sound like it's normal, which is you mean assigning tasks and checking up on these tasks. But I've seen quite a few shares in my life where organizations are not really that great in following up on these tasks and not really great in following the plans they make themselves. So, and of course, another thing which is, which also comes with ITIL and also comes with ISO 20000, is understanding and looking at the IT as a service, which mostly should be in place if you are looking at the ISO 20000, 20, because that already has a core concept of having IT, having IT as a service. And if you got so far to look at this, that means probably you are understanding the concept a little bit yourself as well. Okay. 
Another thing which is one of the good things is that, and now, and it's getting more and more out there, there's quite a lot of pieces of technology already in place. And, and sometimes this is actually turning into something bad because there's so much technology, nobody's actually able to piece this all together because, the tech, because there are choices of, we have three types of systems where we put our tickets, right? So which one do we choose the primary one? Do we choose a primary one? Or what all the other things. So there are some cases where there's even too much technology, but there's at least sufficient amount of technology mostly in place already for the organizations themselves. Okay, so a little bit on the bad. Uh, the bad things sometimes are a bit different. So in some cases, you come into the organization or being either internal or external person, and you see that many processes which are required by ISO 20001 are not covered at all. So they're not there at all. So, I mean, and, and these processes will also differ. I mean, and the most common we've been seeing are the ones related to service level management. Quite often, these are the ones related to service design and deployment. Uh, budgeting and accounting quite often might be there or might be there in a bit different manner than you would normally expect. And not, not, it is there, but quite often it's not service-based. So it's not based on the cost of the service, the, providing the service itself. Another thing which is missing, but this is a changing trend a little bit, is the thing about the uh, continuity ones. So the continuity process for the service sometimes might not be in the place, but this is changing, as I said, because there's more and more attention to the continuity. There's ISO 22301 as a specific standard for continuity, so there are other things which are possible over that. And which is another important thing which we, which we have seen, and this, as I said, also might differ from your experience, is that there is no such thing as service catalog in place. Yes, we do provide services. We have no idea if the service we are providing to the customer A is the same service we are providing to the customer B. And do we, do we see this as the same service? Or maybe there's totally different SLA. So if there's different a service level agreement, does it mean it has to be a different service? Or is it still the same service, just with different SLA? So there are quite a few questions which, are, which have to be answered also over the catalog. And also the question is how you're going to run the catalog. I mean, we have had customers who come in and they say, okay, now we have 15,000 services in place. And you understand, of course, at this point that 15,000 probably sounds quite unmanageable. So you have to simplify in many cases and make this a bit more manageable because the standard is about providing the better management for the organization rather than uh, just, you know, making everything, creating paperwork for everything or creating just structured approach to everything only. So there has to be better management. There has to be management benefit for the organization to have the ISO 20001 uh, in place as well. And there's another thing which is quite important about the bad things. And the other thing which is over there is about the uh, collaboration. So if you look at the project from the be it IT service management or be it ISO 20001 project, you will always see that there is one thing. There's quite a lot of interaction which has to happen between first management second, the service desk or related IT personnel, business as a, in from the perspective of service design, whether these would be internal or external customers, suppliers, and of course, which most people often tend to forget about, the users as well. So this makes it the tricky thing about the implementation, but there are certain benefits which we'll be touching in the end of the presentation about uh, what benefit does the ISO 20001 sometimes bring in these cases. Okay. And so, if we move on, and of course there's a, there's a bit worse than the bad, let's say, let's call it the ugly. And the ugly part about the implementation is that the IT service management system, IT SMS implementations, are quite often the ones which go off track. So these are quite often the ones which take longer than initially expected, longer than initially planned, and they tend to require much more work than you initially, than you would expect from them. And the reasons are very simple. As I said, first of all, there's 170 requirements in the standard, which makes it quite extensive. The requirements are covering almost all the processes of all 15 processes listed, plus a couple of more things about the management, continual improvement, reporting, all the other things. And of course, and, but this is just a technicality. Then there's another story about that there are very different levels of understanding what IT service is, what it will give to the company, what the IT service management system is itself, and how is that going to work in your company as well, or organization. Uh, 
there is also a bit less good implementation practice. I mean, it's a bit tricky because as far as most of you probably have heard or seen, the ISO 20001, um, which had two versions in 2005 and 2011 at the moment, the after ones, it has not gained that much traction as, for example, the ISO 27001. So that's a bit different story. And uh, of course, the reasons, as I said, being that most of the guys who see the benefit initially from this standard are the service providers. And there are a bit less service providers than, you know, the global amount of organizations just requiring a certain amount of information security. So there's less good implementation practice. There are a bit different approaches. And quite often, they'll require you a lot of people from a lot of departments, from a lot of parts of organization to come together. Okay. So management usually expects one thing from the IT service management system. People implementing it will usually see, if not initially, then over time, they will see how many small things will have to be covered for that to work. And of course, people using it, they want to see some benefits as well. Because, I mean, you said we just implemented a really nice and neat IT service management system, but every single user might come back to you and say, hey, things have just there has been no change or things have gotten a little bit worse. So you have to be careful how you approach it. And as I said, I mean, it's much better to approach this as a small process by process. So small things first, I and mean, then you try to fix them and put them into place. Especially if you're going for certification, I will always say that it's very easy to get the certification, but it's really hard to maintain it in a reasonable way. Because just making up a procedure and saying, hey, this is something new, we have this in place, we just, we just train the people, that's nice. But checking up on this after three or four months will actually lead to a bit different conclusion. And it might lead to a situation where you say, hey, this is not working for us, or creating too many problems for us, or this does not give us what we expected from, from it itself. So there are quite a few different things about ISO 20001, which make it different than normal and then the very usual, very common management systems like quality management by 9001 or security management by 20, information security management by 27001. So, as I said, if, even if you will look at the standard, you will see some certain differences. I would probably argue that it's a bit badly written, but badly only from the perspective of um, the way we are used to read the management system standards. It is a bit different, and if you will try to list all the requirements in the standard, you will notice that many of them don't have the certain reference numbers because they are just, you know, like four or five subparagraphs below the actual list of requirements. And these subparagraphs can also contain stuff which is requirements. So the standard itself, it's a bit tricky to read. It's a bit tricky to put it together into requirements. And it's a bit tricky to put it together the way you would like it to work for your organization. That's one thing. Then there is another thing, which is about the over-implementation. As I said in the previous slide, the IT service management system uh, is the one which we see the most cases where the project goes out of the budget, out of the scope, out of the timelines, and everything else. So people tend to pay attention to each and every single detail straight away. People try to make it right, and then they end up in having huge project which, which will never end. And this is something, of course, I will always argue against because, I mean, I'm, I'm, I have to be honest, I'm a believer in the projects which have to end as soon as possible to get some measurable benefits and then you move on and you create another project or something like this in the organization. The maintenance is going to be the most painful issue in the standard and um, it's not, it's not, and it's going to be more painful than the implementation itself. Because the IT service management standard, it, it has a bit more than just continual improvement. It has all the time the stuff about design and transition of new or change services. And I have yet to see an organization which hasn't had a service change in, you know, 10 years or something. Most organizations usually will have some kind of service change in place all the time. Most organizations will add new services, they will discontinue old services. And, some, and there's going to be something happening. And within these changes and the, within the amount of time usually required, you know, we have to do the change fast, it has to be efficient, it has to work straight away, and all the other things which are expected from the management, it's sometimes it's really hard to stick to a reasonable process you put on a paper or you put in your process management system or somewhere else about how you design and how you transition the newer change services back into the IT service management system. 
And the other thing which is over there, as I said, the service level management and service catalog sometimes are tricky to implement. I would argue that, there, that it's, not just, it's not that there is no good practice, it's more than there is actually, a, the diff, there are major differences in good practice over there. And of course you have to understand also that there is IT service management, ITIL doing its, doing its job as well with the, the new version, with the also the 2011 version stating that you know there are certain things which are processes which should be there and all the other things related to this. So, and people will have um, sometimes trouble actually to, uh, to put the service catalog uh, into, into place and to make it work for them and to make it reasonably manageable which is another thing about that. Yeah, and then of course there's another thing, there's another thing about implementation specifics. So, as I said, especially if you talk about organizations where the IT service management is not the core of their business, you will usually, and for this standard, very specifically I would argue for this, you would usually go only for the part of organization providing IT services. This in turn creates certain issues because uh, this means that, you know, the, all the management system standards say that it has to be management support and all the other things. But if you look at this and if you do this only for part of organization, um, this might get tricky because management support might be, it's not, it's not that it's not there, it might be that it actually is, you know, not the way you initially expected it. There might be less of it because it's just one department. And especially if you look at organizations which are service receivers, as we looked in the very beginning, where the IT is mostly seen as a cost. And then, of course, I mean the management support and the way the management looks at this might be a bit different than you would expect it to be. Okay. So, understanding of benefits will also vary. So, there's going to be a major difference in the way people see the benefits from IT service management system. There might be a certain amount of people who will think that this, this is going to be, give us better management of the IT service management, but the users will usually expect the IT services to become better, and they usually expect this to happen in a you know, foreseeable time frame. And that's the tricky part over there. The people who work by pro for providing these services also have certain expectations which might differ from case to case. And of course that means that it's really tricky to put you know, the interested parties requirements together for the IT service management system. Then, and it's a, it's a, usually it might be a bit more difficult than it is for the quality management or than it is for the information security management system. Understanding of the contents also will vary wildly. The reason I'm saying this is because even in the organizations which are service providers, there usually is going to be quite different roles of people doing quite different stuff within the organization. And most of the people, they never like the idea, you know, somebody saying, you know, yes, this job you're doing is important, but there's, this process is a bit more important. Because each one of us wants to do something which is of certain importance to the organization we are working for. So you don't want to say to somebody, hey, you are not important because the stuff you're doing is not important for us or something like this. So you have to pay attention to most of the processes simultaneously, whether this would be the design part, whether this would be the um, delivery processes, resolution, relationship, or control processes. In history, depending on culture, you'll probably have a little bit different approaches, have a little bit different focuses on certain areas. Some organizations might focus more on relationships, some organizations might focus more on control processes, some organizations will focus more on resolution processes, and this is normal and this is expected. You just have to know for yourself, as if you are doing implementation, you just have to know which is going to be the one you're going to be focusing the most. Because if you don't, you might get easily distorted, and I mean, there might be some other issues coming over there. And another implementation specific, which is not mentioned in the slide here, is the one about the metrics. So the one about the metrics is because, as I said, most organizations have certain reporting and measurement systems in place. I've seen quite a few times that these are actually not showing the true picture. The reason being that they are quite often distorted by different kind of motivation schemas or reporting structure to management. And people are smart. I mean, people always are smart. And people always come, up, come out with a way to figure out what's expected from them and with a way to give this to the, to the person expecting this from them, even maybe sometimes without actually delivering it. So, 
And I've seen it also a couple of times. Organizations say, "Hey, our motivation schema depends on how fast you resolve the incident." So people, you know, and face time and they understand people are closing the incident as far as possible without actually closing the incident themselves. So they adjust it accordingly. They try to put some measurements to improve this. But as I said, for the metrics and for the measurement systems, we not might not be showing what's happening inside the organization. And you might have really good metrics and measurements on incidents, for example, on service requests, but these but the measurements you have in the problem management might be not living up to the expectations. So you have to think about which are the most important processes, and then based on this one, you have to adjust the measurement and metric system as well. Okay. So I've been talking mostly for the last couple of minutes about the difficulties, as you have as you have seen. So the question, of course, is there are there any benefits? for actually implementing the IT service management in accordance. I would argue that there are a few, and probably the list can be a bit longer. I mean, if you would look at the formal list of the, the benefits, and I think they mentioned around 10 or 10 of them, like cost savings, improved quality, or blah, 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 I would put a bit different approach in this and say, yes, the ones we've seen mostly are, first of all, these are relationships, and these are the service managers. How, to have, how they have to approach relationships. Because the standard specifically says that there is business relationship management process and there is supplier management process. So we have to think about this as, as a relationship management, which includes actually the reporting, which includes actually all the other stuff within the organization, which includes actually sitting down with the customers or with the suppliers on a regular basis and talking through and trying to look for the ways to improve the services and to change the services so they become better. Okay, so there are certain things that should be in place. And so the relationships are important and sometimes I have to say that this comes as a discovery to the people actually doing the implementation that, hey, relationships, we have to think about them? Never thought of this. But of course, I mean, you understand that this is, when you, when you say this out loud, it sounds kind of stupid, but I mean, sometimes these things happen. There are marketing benefits, and of course, most commonly, these are the ones which are for the service providers. So the marketing benefits would mean, hey, we have this nice certificate saying that we have the ISO 20,000 um, in the organization. But to be honest, for the 90% of the cases, when you go out with this and you say, hey, we have this, you will have to also explain what it is to the customer. So it's not a self-explanatory thing. It's not something everybody knows, and much, and Probably uh, there is some kind of statistics available or somebody has done some kind of research, but I would argue and having no idea whatsoever what ISO 20001 is. So this is another thing about marketing benefits that they are a bit tricky. Sometimes they might work, and especially for service providers, okay, is the management thinking part. And the management thinking part is the most interesting part because and I've seen, and I'm not saying this is always about general management, sometimes it's about middle management, service managers, the process managers, people responsible for certain things. So they come up and they, and they, the most surprising thing for them and on your hands of what you want to do. This plan ideally should be adjusted to the overall strategy of the call organization for which it's for which it's done. And then you have to check up on this plan within a certain amount of time. I mean you're doing this either by the management review or something else. And then you see what's done and what's not done, and you adjust accordingly and you ask people to report back. And more and I have to say that more than once this actually comes as something which is of a bit of a little bit surprise because people are very used to running around, you know, putting out fires. People are very used to not thinking about the general strategy, strategic things and people and very often people the strategies are changing also all the time and then the people are not able to adjust of what's happening. So the thinking part about how the management system works is also quite important. And it's also quite important when you put this into the IT service management perspective. It's quite important for the IT teams you have in your organization or somebody else like this who's going to be doing this and then they have to start thinking the same way, which I would say is quite 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 a good thing over there. Uh, yeah, so these are the few main benefits I can come up with from our experience. And as I said, I mean, these might differ 
And these are mostly focused on if you really want to implement the ITSMS and if you want to go for certification afterwards or not, which is basically your decision. But yeah, it's another thing. So, based on all this, the question is about does it make sense to have an IT, ITSMS implemented, and does it have does it make sense to have the uh, uh, to have the certification done afterwards? I would say that I mean there's going to be probably certain improvement in management skills and reporting and getting all the data back. There's going to be certain improvement in the service culture, but to be honest, I think it depends, and I think that's one of the good reasons why the ISO 20001 is not as popular as some other management system certifications because the actual benefits are going to depend from organization to organization. The actual ability to realize these benefits is going to depend from organization to organization. And the decision, actually, if you see the benefit for you, is going to be up to you. And another thing which is quite important is if you look at the list of the processes in the ITSMS and you say, hey, we have only four of those, and we don't have a lot of others, you have to approach this as a quite long-term project. Because as I said, I mean, this is not going to be as easy as you might expect. This is not going to be, this is going to take much more people than you would maybe initially expect to, and this is going to be, take much more time than you would initially might expect to, to require. Okay, so this is quite a lot of processes which have to be in place. Some of them require certain amount of documentation. Some of them require certain amount of top technology behind them. So there are a few things which have to be put into place. Okay, and if you look at this implementation perspective, so I would always argue, as I said, that there are two ways to implement. So one of the ways to implement is actually sorry. Uh, one of the ways to implement is actually to have this, uh, you look at this as a project and you, and you have a certain deadlines for it. And as I said, if you have this, if you have this approach, Make it first a and million dollar agreement pending, dependent of if you have the certification or not. It's going to be if you do the implementation correctly, if you do it, if you do the, if you have well implemented the ITSMS in place. Okay. There's a certain amount of thinking required. So thinking means that you have to think about the processes you have. You have to look look at them. You have to check if they actually are related to each other because IT service management processes cannot be independent from one another. So that means there have to be there's going to be certain linkage between them. And that means you have to think about them, you have to look at them, you have to pay time, and you have to pay, you know, the resource of intelligence, you know. I always like the saying that common sense is not that common. And uh, sometimes when you look at the stuff people do for the organizations for the implementing certain processes, I, you have to agree with this. And and, and when you look at this, you show them it back and say, hey, how did you expect this to work? They are, we never thought of this, I mean, from the perspective of how it should work. We just thought there has to be a process in place, it has to be described, and that's it. Okay. Another thing which, as I said, is a bit more uh, in the IT service management system than it is in actually any other uh, management system is about the continual improvement, because the continual improvement, at least not for the management system itself, but also for the services, is part of the thing which is built into the IT service management system. So that means yeah, part of the processes are about design and transition of new and changed processes and looking for the processes you need to change or need to improve over the time. So you have to understand that you have you'll have you'll have to maintain it. And if you don't maintain it, I mean there's no sense of going after IT SMS at all. If you don't expect to maintain it, stick to the processes you have, whatever these are, incident or change or concentration management. If they make you happy, live with them. Don't go for the ITSMS implementation if you're not able to maintain it afterwards. That would be my decision. But yeah, of course, I mean, strange things sometimes happen. Okay. Yeah. Before we move into questions and answers, so and I'll try to answer the, uh, at least one question. I would love for more. Um, there are certain things which are important as well. Some of them are about typical implementation. 
And a typical implementation, I mean, there can be different approaches, but as I said, most commonly you will still have to start with something of trying to understand where you are with respect to requirements. So that means you have to go through the standards, you have to create an Excel spreadsheet or something like this, and you have to check, make a checkboxes or check marks saying, hey, here we are in this stage, here we are in this stage, this we don't have, this we do have in place, and all the other things. So the stuff which is called the gap analysis is something which might be there, and you can have you can assign different kind of values or whatever you want to, but this will give you the idea of the, of the scope of the project of ITSMS implementation. This will give you the idea how much time you're going to need to implement it. And you also have to remember that there is much more overhead for any newly implemented process than there is for the process which has been in the organization for several years already. Okay, so whenever you implement new process, you have to expect that you will have to sit with it like your newborn baby for a certain amount of time. You have to teach it, you have to learn, you have to make it work within the organization, you have to learn, you have to teach it to work within the organization. So certain things have to happen out there. I would probably argue that you will have to come up with certain master list of documents as well, uh, which is going to be very similar to most of you if you do this, if you look through the requirements of the standard. You might have some other things in place. You don't have, you should not forget about it. this standard, same as the others, require stuff which is called the risk assessment. So it should be done. Uh, and I mean, the other things should be in place. So from my perspective, before we move, move further, as I said, if you don't have structured processes in place, uh, if you want, if you look at this as a stuff where you have to do everything, don't go for certification. Just do the service management system bits by bits first. It's going to take you enough time already, enough resources already. Once you have at least a certain amount of processes in place, only then you should go for the certification. Only then you should look at this as something you want to do on the certification perspective. Another thing which is important, I mean, this is, and, and these, are, these are not the ultimate truth. I mean, you can do this uh, from scratch. You can do this any way you want to, but I mean, this is something which just to make it more simple. If you don't have technology in place, if you don't have stuff like service desk, if you don't have means in place for monitoring, if you don't have reporting structures in place, probably the IT service management system is not going to be very easy for you to attain as well. It is possible, I'm not saying it's not, but you have to look at this from this perspective, that the more technology you have in place, the more used to using it you are already, the, more, the better you are with it, the more it's going to benefit you as an organization, the easier it's going to be to implement the ITSMS. If you don't have technology, that means technology implementation is going to be another sub-project, and it's going to make things even more difficult. And then I would also say that maybe look at technology first, figure out what's, what's beneficial, keep the requirements of the standard in your mind, but come back to the standard afterwards. Yeah, so this more or less covers most of the things I wanted to talk about. Um, so I have, as I said, I have one question, and um, I'm, wel I'm welcoming more. Uh, I'll try to answer this one, so the screen might go. I'll probably stop sharing screen at the moment um, as we move to questions and discussion, and uh, then we can see what happens, okay? So does everybody still hear me? Yeah, so the question I have is about an um, organization that seeks for certification, but they outsource most of the IT, for example, operations itself. Uh, it is an interesting question because mo in most of these cases, and we had a few actually around, uh, the situation is that what happens is afterwards, organizations can go for certification, right? So they can outsource the processes, they set requirements for the outsourcing organization. But in most of these cases, they end up in just saying, hey guys, you are our outsourcing provider. We want you to get certified. Would you be able to do this at least within the scope of the services you are providing to us? And this is usually what happens in the end of the day. And this is actually something which I've seen in most cases how it, how it ends up. Of course, you still can uh, do the uh, certification by having everything outsourced, but it's going to be a bit different. Uh, it's going to be a bit more difficult, uh, probably, because you have to have the uh, and you will have to have certain processes. And the problem is that the exercise for the ITSMS uh, is that you know there's certain requirements are in the standard, so they're not they're not really that much of a choice for you to make. It's not like yes we want or no we don't want to have it. It's if there is a requirement in the standard, 
you have to be able to, to prove that you're doing this one way or the other. Either you are requesting this from your, from, from your supplier, and then they, the question is why wouldn't they get certified? Or if you are if you're doing it yourself, then you have to have certain uh, specific uh, management requirements how you are managing this. So, because the man this ITSMS does not actually uh, differentiate, it says it always says that even though you don't do the service, you have requirements for certification, right? Okay, seems we don't have other questions. Mm -hmm. So, thank you for the great presentation and thank you all for attending this webinar. We hope you enjoyed it. So please don't forget to check our website and our social media channels for more information about our upcoming webinars. Thanks once again, Yuris, and thanks to all attendees, and have a nice day. Thank you. Okay, bye. Bye-bye.